All right, so we are going to do an art challenge in October. These are the sort of props. So Mondays, it can be three colors. Tuesdays is two colors. Wednesdays is three colors. Thursdays is three colors. Fridays is two colors. Saturdays is as many colors as you feel like. And then Friday is two colors. Sorry, sun, and then Sunday is um, monochromatic. I am using the same squares that I did in my, I think it was a February challenge that was actually like a May challenge because I got COVID. But I am quite excited. I like doing challenges like this. I was waiting for all the different Inktober prompts to come out. They've all come out. It's October 1st. It's like three o'clock on October 1st when I'm starting this. Nothing excites me that I've seen so far this year. So we're going to hope that this works. So it's a Sunday, which means it's monochromatic. We are going to put... What are we going to do? We're going to go to docks. list and pour and uh, Da Vinci in here. And now I'm going to do a random number generator. And I'm going to get it to choose number 2058. 21. Oh, we're painting with Potter's Pink. That's fun. We are painting a soliloquy potter's pink. Right there. Do I know what I'm painting? No. But we're going to paint something. I think I am going to get rid of the metallic paints just because I don't really feel like. Um, painting with the talents today. But. Let's get into this. My goal is like when I did the other challenge to not redo any of these. I've actually only cut 32 squares. I need 31. Cut one extra just in case I like drop a paintbrush or something.
Here we go. Now it's dry and we get to pull the tape and oh, I love pulling tape on minis. Nice clean edges. Next we have a Monday, so I get to use three colors. Uh, let's find another tonight between. Thirty two. Addison and Sedwigs. Four colors I'm going to use in a piece. I want to use. I'm going to use rainbow. And go. Um, just move the tripod so at least I stop hitting it. I somehow lost one of my pieces of tape. Now let's tape down day two. For what I think is going to be day two. In reality, once these are all done, um, I might change up the order. What's really important is that I've got the right number of each type done. So I've got the right number of three colors and two colors and monochrome and any things. Whereas, like, some of this stuff is less important. Just wet these all. Thank you. 
And now we get to do the best part, which is pulling off the tape. So this is Silversmith Van Gogh in leaves. They're all advent colors from 2022, I want to say. Yeah, they're all advent colors. I them all in my advent calendar, so that makes sense. I really like this piece. So, next up we have number one. What's number one? I don't know. Ooh, pretty excellent. Which are the paints by... I forget what brand they are now. They've been rebranded. Are they Paul Rubin? I want to say pretty excellent is actually Paul Rubin, but that might be wrong. It's been probably eight months since I touched this set of colors. I don't use them all that often. I did decant them into pans. I use them to mock up pieces sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What colors do I feel like? Well, I really like their turkey blue, if I can find it. That's Pan's gray. Pan's blue. That's their turkey blue. Let's go hot pink. Clearly, I've used this pink quite a lot. Probably one of my favorite colors from a non-professional brand. I still actually don't have a permanent rose in my palette. Um, I think I'm just going to wet this entire page. And drop color into it. There, we've got something <clears throat> cool and tie-dye going on. So let's dry it. It went very purple, but I probably should have expected that with drying it. Um, probably should have just waited for it to air dry. But we have many, many more of these to go. 
only about 10% done. And so there's not time for everything to air dry, unfortunately. Next up, we have tonight 15. Ah, uh, 15 doesn't work. I only own one color from them. Oh, I guess it does work. They can be a monochrome. So I will keep them for the next monochrome. They will sit on a card. And we will redraw for our next recolor, which is a six. Narani. A brand that is no longer in existence, unfortunately. She made great paints. I really like them. I have, I think, every color she ever created. But I think she only ever did maybe two shop updates. They were fun colors, though. So. Um, let's take this down. I need three colors. I'm going to have to break out a different palette. I don't know what I've got. Three Narni colors in this palette. I think most of my colors from her were in mini pants, which means they are in their own little house. So, turns out I actually only have three matte colors from her, so we are using them all to do this piece. Gonna do a tiny little sunset? We'll find out. Um, a tiny little sky piece. trying to figure out what was going on. It actually is out of the paper. All right, let's dry this and see if I can build it up anymore. It isn't exactly what I wanted, so I'm mixing right on the desk. And it's getting some trees.
home. We painted tiny trees and a tiny landscape. Time for the tape peel. There we go. Next up, we have I'll just set these up. We've done a one, a three, a two, a three. So we've got another three. We've got Thursday. <clears throat> seven. What seven? Beam. We get to paint beam paints, which also aren't in this palette. But I am super excited to paint with beam paints. I am going to use my paint stones instead of my palette. I just wouldn't feel like it. Um, so three. Get some paint stones. We're gonna do a tiny pumpkin. I think we are. I literally just did was like nine pumpkins yesterday in a piece, and I'm still not over how much I enjoy doing pumpkins this year. Yeah, those are three colors. They look very Halloween. They look very spooky. They've had a second to activate, and so now I'm going with a very light, light coat of orange. Just Make a pumpkin shape. It's dry, and so now I get to go in with some real bean pumpkin, which is actually what the color is called. Now we're going to do a stem, but I don't actually own a brown from Bean. So let's mix up a brown-ish color. Thank you. 
I think I'm going to add a very, very light purple background. Here we go. I really like it. It's super cute. It's all dry. The tape gets to come off. so happy with it. It's so cute. I have just dumped the orange paint stone into my green one. What number is up next? Generate. 32. Have we already done 32? What is this? It's a 2? It is a 2. Um, yep, it's Addison and Sedwigs. Tidy up the desk a little bit. Not that I'm not going to continue to use it as a mixing palette because, you know, it's there, but. Let's do Musée d'Orsay and the giant squirrel pan because it's great. And. I think Addison and Sedwig's yellow. I don't know what I do. Nope, I start in the greens. I'm going to do something with a blue background and gray line marker. Do I know what that thing is? Nope. But it's going to have a blue background and gray line marker. All right, so let's do the background.
let it dry. I think this was the same pattern I did in the yellow. Let's say back in either April or May, whenever I did this challenge originally. Back then, though, it was a single color challenge. So I'm enjoying this different spin to it, which is it not being single color. Not that single color isn't fun, but there's an element of challenge when it's something like this. I did that one too close. Here we go. That looks cool. I don't have many rules when I'm doing these really miniature challenges, but my main rules are that I don't redo the design unless it's like a catastrophic failure. So dumping a paintbrush on by accident or um, I think in the last one, I accidentally flipped it off the table and so, well, it was still wet and so that wasn't savable. The other thing is that I try to keep all of them less than three minutes painting. Next number is number three. Oh, I choose the pastel set and it's anything I want. Cool, cool, cool. I already know what I'm doing. We are going to do something fun. So this was one of the first handmade sets I bought. I'm grabbing right now. It is not in that tray. Because clearly I know where my stuff is. It is a pastel set, and I absolutely adore when I get to use it. Dumped a squirrel on my desk. Got a blue paint everywhere. It does seem to be the day for dumping paint on my desk. This will be number seven. I'm making progress in a month that has. 31 days. It's so making not that much progress, but making progress. <laughs> I don't always batch film content. I normally don't. 
my batch film Ferris Wheel Press opening stuff normally because I'm too excited to not and it makes it easier to just swatch and film at the same time versus swatching once for myself and then swatching another time for camera. Most of the time though, I'm not batch filming content. It makes a lot of work when it comes to editing. In this case though, batch filming minis works really well for me, I find, especially when I'm doing a monthly challenge like this, because it means I can also then go in and schedule these posts. And so they will post every day. I don't have to think about them and any additional posts I get up is great, but there's a post going up every day in the month of October or whatever month I'm batch filming content for. Um, let's start with the yellow. So these are all gray pastels, which means they've all got a gray undertone to them. These were the first pastel set I ever got, and I still love them. And I am, I'm going to dry them between layers so that I can like layer them up and do something like I did with my bubble post a few months back. All right, now we're gonna go in with the green gray. to dry again. Now we get to go in with the blue, which is one of my favorite like pale blue colors. This isn't a color that I use a lot of, but I own many of. So it comes in a lot of sets I like, or colors like it too. I'm probably going to do another layer. Unless the pink like really pulls it together. It's time for the plum. I 
I actually really like that. And it is. There we go. I think it is so cute. We are now, oh, we're onto stone gram. I've already got that one out because we had generated a number that was a single. Fantastic. So I am going to slide this away. Bring this in and put these all away. The nice thing about having an open palette is that everything can go away wet without an issue. Don't have to worry about things growing because even when my palette stops, there's still gaps on the sides and so everything still gets air. I don't want to worry about lint as much because the section that's open doesn't have paint. So the one stone ground color I have is a green earth. It will come as no surprise if you've watched my green earth video why I've got it. It's a really pretty green earth. I think it was in my like top three if I could only own three green earths. It may have lost to something else. A while since I looked at that video. Green Earth does take forever to activate though, so I'm gonna wet it and then we're just gonna sit here for a bit. I hope I hope it has sat for long enough. It's been long enough for me to label all of the designs we've done up till now. This was one of my favorite designs I did in the first challenge where I just took a brush and used it until it ran out of paint. So I'm glad I did it in this one as well. I think as an image it looks super cool. I think we often forget just how far a single drop of paint can go. 
this is a pretty cool representation of just that. Nineteen is our next number, which is Mirakai, another fantastic shop that is no longer in existence. She's really sad. Uh, I love her stuff. I, she is one of the paint makers who I wish I had purchased more paints from while she was still in existence, because now that she no longer exists. It's all sought after in the handmade world. And if people have them, they sell quite quickly. Not that I want to sell them, but there are some colors that I wish I'd purchased that I'd love to get and are basically impossible to get. So it's a three challenge. What colors do I want? Let me think about this. Um, I think I've only got four, maybe five colors from her. So it's not... Yeah, I've only got four colors. So. We're gonna grab... Eternal Rose, which is always a favorite. And then we're going to grab the two that have got mini pans. She is... Is she the only shop I've ever purchased mini pans from? I think so. And I wish I bought more of them because they are my favorite travel paints. For a long time, this was my travel palette. I've done updated travel palette videos since then, but this was it. And so having her little paints was great. And we are still on the tape that we started, I think on number two, day two. It's trying to get a bit less sticky. Probably time for new tape soon. Yeah, this is probably the last mini in this tape. I don't know, because it was way less sticky. Really not wanting to stitch the paper all the way. Not quite sure what I want to do, so I'm just gonna wet them. And then I'm gonna decide. Alright.
That's something. That's the vaults. Time for new tape. This stuff isn't even sticking to my hand anymore. Alright. Generate. Number one. I don't want to do number one again. <laughs> number ten. Sure. Number ten for a two challenge. So number 10 is Prison Paints, another shop that is no longer around, unfortunately, or I don't think she is. Last time I checked, her website was up for anyone to buy, which is a pretty good indication that they're no longer around making paints. Um, this is... Bliss and First Love. Um, it could be her original collection release. A lot of these makers that I have were makers that were starting during COVID. And so I have paints from either their first or second releases because we were in lockdown and I have the ability to purchase from them. So I've just done some math to figure out exactly how many of each I need. I need five monochromatics. I've got three. I need 13 three colors. I have four. I need nine two colors. I have two. I'm working on a third. And I need four anything. I have one. I think what I'm going to do from this point on is just choose a category and work through all of them and then move on to a new category. So I'm probably going to have to start with threes. Actually, I'm going to start with twos. Twos are the hardest. I'm going to do all the twos and then I'm going to choose a new category. So let's get into this too.
one is going to be uh, generator generate 31 okay that's a new brand we haven't had yet uh, two colors from her This tray, or you need it. Ugh. I've moved things ever so slightly, and now I don't know where anything is. You are a violet. Oh, I was just looking for the wrong pan color. I was looking for a black pan, and you're on a white pan.
I honestly don't know how many of these we've done. I keep thinking we've done so many and we really haven't. number and we accidentally pressed the Thirteen. Roman small uh thirteen. Windsor Noon. Professional paints. Cool. I'm excited for this. But two colors. Uh, Windsor Noon Professionals, do I have? I think I know the two I want. white which is actually a blush but it counts it's in my watercolor palette and I want aqua green which is up here and up here in this color So aqua green is one of the newer Windsor Noon colors. I think they came out in, they either came out in late 2021 or early 2022. I honestly can't remember. So many paints got released by so many brands every year that it's hard to keep the dates of everything straight. But 
I am unsure about how I feel about it. I've seen some people swatch it and it looks stunning. Mine is nice, but not how I saw it in swatches in videos when I was trying to decide if I wanted to buy it or not. So I'm glad I only got a 5 mil tube of it. Some of which I think I've already traded for Schmincke Super Granulating Colors. I'm also going to wet this, but we're going to wet it now so it is time to dry a little bit because I want it damp, not soaking wet. The white gouache is such a bully to other colors, which is one of the things I love about it. You can just see its tendrils expanding through the dress. Alright, I'm actually going to let this air dry because I think it'll look cooler that way. So you can see how the white has just like bullied the teal out of its space, which I think the teal out of its space, which I think looks super cool. And you've got some of like the separation of the aqua green, but I haven't been able to get the crazy separation I've seen in people's posts, even on super textured paper yet, so I'm still playing around with it in my own studio space. The next number was number 35, and number 35 is cause paints, which means we're using Viola. And I think I'm going to use Ash Moon as well and do something like this, but with different line art on top. I like the look and I think it'll look really cool with Viola. So I'm going to put away these colors. And we're going to get into We are now on our sixth uh, of the doubles, which means after this, we only have three left. I've just gone paint all over my hand and water all over my desk. I need to wash my paint cloth. That's why I'm not using it here. Normally I would, but it is so covered in paint that at this point it's not helping the process of getting brushes clean or my table clean. It's just getting more pigment on my work surface. So it's time that it had a bath. I also used it to clean stamps on, so it's got some random stamps on it. Thank you. 
it's really important with this one that it gets squished down all the way because we're putting color right on it and all the way to the edges. Maybe not all the, right, all the way to the edges. We might leave it like that. Actually, no. All right, let's let this dry. All right, we're dry. My brush is clean. It's not the brush I want. This one. to have like an organic feel sort of Oh, clean edges. And we flipped it. What's our next number? 28. Thirty-one purple fish. Oh, all right. Two thirty-one purple fish colors. I didn't do tiny more colors. Going to do teeny tiny leaves. And I want my blue green color. Not this one. This one. Put these away. Pretty one purple fish. I want green haze. And grass haze. If I can get them out of this too. Okay. I definitely want grass haze. Hmm, do I want a different green instead? There's a little bit of test paper. Yeah. 
screen is going back. And we're grabbing Midnight Moss, which is a fantastic color. It's one of my favorite greens from any brand. Why I didn't grab it to start with, I don't know. But we've grabbed it now. Let's take up our square. I've given up on these being straight in the frame, but they are too hard to keep straight because as soon as you tape one side, they go all uneven. Like that. All right, let's see if I can freehand these. There. <laughs> Got a bit heavy handed there for a second. Thank you. 
Here we go. It was quick and easy and fun. It's actually quite a lot of fun. Uh, and it's also time for new tape, I think. Alright, that was number seven of the twos, and so we have 21 is, nope, can't do 21, third two, we even two Addison and Sedwigs, <laughs> give me a new number here, three, I guess it's pure pigments. Um, so I will find two pure pigment colors that I want to use in this. Let me look at how many pure pigment colors I own and see if there's anything that maybe I haven't used in a while. Salmon. Because I don't think I've used either of these colors in months. At some point, I need to do a palette de stash. But for now, I will continue to live in my palette. Um, number eight might be number eight. And then we're done with this half of the twos. And then, no, we've got one more minute of the twos. We need nine twos. And then we get to move on to probably the threes. I genuinely enjoy the mono monochrome pieces. And any things are quite a lot of fun. I've already got some ideas, so I'm probably going to move on to the threes. Actually, I'm probably going to take a break because we are now many hours into this um, project. I just counted, and this is number eight, which means there's only one left after this one. I do enjoy how red carrot is. Carrot is like shockingly red. It actually sort of like this. It's just like sort of abstract and it exists. And I think that's what I love about it. That might be this piece. It's all dry now and I think it looks super cool. It's very abstract. But I like wiggly lines of it. Oh, 
what's our final two going to be? Number two. Uh, number two doesn't exist in my palette anymore. Which makes number two now pure pigments, which we already did. So let's redraw of 34. I don't want to do number one again. 27. I think we've already done 27 a bunch of times. Oh, no. 27 is 31 purple fish. Do I want to do another 31 purple fish at this point? Um... Hmm. Sure. Let's grab indigo green and indigo. They are two different colors. They both have parts of their name that are the same, and I think they're fun. And really, is when I do a project like this about anything more than me having fun. Not really. Salmon and carrot bat. And let's grab a square of tape. Sort of can't believe we're already almost done with the twos. Let's move on to the threes. I also can't believe how often we're getting repeated numbers. Um, and there's a lot of brands we haven't seen yet. We haven't seen anything with Cosmic Creations paints. We haven't seen any Roman Small. We haven't seen any Daniel Smith. We haven't seen any Artistic Isle. What else am I missing from my studio palette? We haven't seen any white knights. They are on my studio palette list. They're a brand that exists in my palette. We haven't seen any schminke. We haven't seen Da Vinci. We haven't seen Core. So, lots of repeats. But. We're not seeing some brands yet. I am going to be that annoying person that does half of the page in one color and then once it's dry I'm going to do the other half in indigo Let's let it dry. So that was indigo green. And now we're going to do indigo indigo.
And then we're going to let it dry. It's interesting to see how much more smoothly the indigo green dried versus the indigo blue. The indigo blue sort of just stayed together. But that is the end of our twos, and so now we get to generate. We get a 32. Uh, uh, sure. And you know what? We're gonna use... Oh, I've dropped a pan of paint. Luckily it fell top up, and so I just got paint on myself. I'm not painting anything else. We're gonna use this palette, which I've never actually used. It is from Boulder Colors. I think it's super cute. But I've never actually painted with it. And we got a three. So let's tape this off. how pink this pink is. I've actually got it in my palette. most important thing about these is that they don't feel stressful. As soon as they feel stressful, like it's a less enjoyable process to do minis like this. And I do do complicated minis, but when I'm mass producing minis like this, it's not something I want to do. I want to just like get to enjoy the process of painting them. 
and do quick and easy. I don't want to do number one. What's number 15? <laughs> oh, Jackson's colors. I think I only have four colors from Jackson's. This is going to be fun. I have... I have four. I have sap green, I have thalo green deep, I have Prussian blue, and I have thalo blue. We are going to grab everything but thalo blue. Not my favorite blue. I have many of them. I try to love them. I cannot love them. I keep trying. I have yet to find one that I even sort of, sort of like, like not even love, just like can appreciate in a palette. We're not even there yet. So let's grab those ones. Should we do a tiny little weird mixing palette? That's what I think I want to do. Mm -hmm. Alright, we're going to start by... Repositioning us ever so slightly, mostly because it's bugging me. And now we're going to start clean. Thank you. 
I have my colors. So we've got three Roman small colors. We have Aquarius Black, Aquarius Gray, and Caput Mortem. It took a little bit to figure out Caput Mortem because I had mislabeled my swatches and the color that was labeled as being Caput Mortem, or the number that was assigned to Caput Mortem was actually different color than Roman small and then I needed to figure out which color I was actually looking for. That is now done. The Jackson's colors are all officially away and we get to take on this next one. It's gonna be another Halloween themed mini. It's October. I feel like doing more fall themed minis. The pumpkin is super cute, so let's do more. This is already taped to the right angle. It's like I punched this at exactly the right angle. I should have, it's a square paper punch. So, first up is the background, where we are making it, like, spooky. Mostly because I can. And I didn't get this tape sealed down all the way, so. Giving up on tape. Giving up. Band and ship. Clearly it was time for more new tape. They did not make that decision. So we will abandon ship. Of that tape line best we can. That's a, a little background for a little bat. I love the name Little Bat. If you don't already know, there is a Cosmic Creations fray that's called Little Bat. Um, I absolutely love it. There's still green in my brush. I have just gotten green in this gray. The other thing I dislike about using phthalos. You're just looking bad. <gasps> and I love it. Hello, Tim. Cross between the mouse and the bat. <gasps> That's really what it looks like. It looks like if like Mickey Mouse were a bat. There we go. 
and it'll spook me back on but what am 27 31 purple fish Ooh. we've already done two so let's redraw 22 uh, i can't do it i only have two colors from them 28 yes it's artistic aisle which means i get to use I want to use this set. Or do I want to save it for anything? No, I'm going to use it now because I don't know that I'll get her when it comes to anything. And really, there's already a set that I really want to use from her if I get her for anything. I just dumped my finger in to put more in them. Ugh. So, the palette we're about to use is <laughs> another one of the Lisa Alden palettes, but this one's filled with paint. Have I ever used it for anything other than the mixing space or Tundra Violet? No, but I do really love it. It's super cute. Um, are we going to do another one without a board? Sure. And I think we're probably going to do another pumpkin-y gourd thing. Because I can. So, oops. There's black in my brush. Just trying to see that. So we're just sticking with oranges. This is one of the Christmas sets last year, I think. I honestly can't remember if it's been. months since I got this set. Side of this paper. It's very scratchy. It could just be the fact that I like haven't actually activated these paints. I am being impatient.
So I think we're actually going to take a break for the day here. It's 19 miniatures done of 31 needed. So I've actually finished most of them, but I'm starting to sort of hit a wall creatively. And so that means it's time to stop. So we'll come back tomorrow and we'll finish them up. So welcome back. I so welcome back. I took the evening off. I was tired. So we're back to do number nine of the threes. Up to number nine. Making progress. Just gonna tuck that list. Generate 25. 25 is core. Oh. We haven't seen Cory yet. Um, so I can't do core. I only own two colors from them. So they are going to become one of our four anything pieces. So I'm actually gonna pull the two core colors out of here. which are sap green and indigo. And I'm just gonna slide it up into our four section. I sort of divided my table today. And we are now having a new square. We are going to generate 21. 21 is also a brand that I only own two of. And I guess it could be in anything. Um, I almost never use them. They're real sticky paints. Like I poured them four years ago and they're still so sticky and liquidy. It just just grabbing them, my fingers are stained. But they are Dale and Rowney artists. In cadmium red and hue and cadmium orange hue. Generate 24. Ah, uh, only on one color of, and it's white. That doesn't really work even for monochrome. 14 is Stone Ground Paint Co. I've already done a monochrome in Stone Ground. I guess we can do another one. Okay. No, I don't want to. 24. Yeah. 34. Cause Paints. We need three cause paints colors. I am grabbing. What am I grabbing? Ash mist. And something else. It's gonna be my something else. So let's do a finish first. What I think is pasta, but it's actually ash rose. Okay. 
we finally got another three. That was shockingly hard to get. That is the downside of only having some brands that you own two colors of. So let's wet this. This point, this brush needs to be cleaned. Can I make it through all these miniatures without cleaning this brush once with soap? I do clean all my brushes after big projects like this. I love doing tiny trees. I think they're probably one of my favorite things to paint. I throw a paintbrush. Should we do a tiny bird? Any birds? So next up we have twelve Winds of Noon Professional. All right, I've already done a two in this, but I have many colors from them. So let's pick something else. Let's do Smalt Dupont Blue. Aqua green and put one in violet. I think that'll be a fun mix. Let's put these away and grab our new colors. And aqua. I 
always confuse after rose and pasta. My colors are two different colors, but they look similar in my head, even though they act quite differently. So it is it's one of the colors I want. Just what I said, I said purple and violet. Do I actually want it though? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think swatch is very differently from the color that I'm thinking of. So let's actually grab a little more. It's pretty violent. Now that I've got a pretty good idea of where colors are in the palette, but it's only been a couple weeks since I did that massive tidy up. Maybe that's pretty normal. It is, it's just in backwards, and so I couldn't see the brand. So the brands are all labeled on the skinny side so that I can see all my brands when I'm looking at the edge of a palette. Well, the bottom edge. So I can only really see one row, but it just sort of helps me figure out the paints that are in that row and that helps me figure out where other things are. Just breaking things today. So it was backwards and I was just missing it. There are three colors. There's our square. It's wet everything. I'm gonna make sure the tape's all the way pressed down because I'm gonna wet this paper fully and so if it isn't pressed down, it is going to make a mess. It's also Monday, which means it's a paint your style day. So I'm also at the same time I'm doing this, I'm thinking about colors for this week's paint your style. It's an interesting piece, it's male tones. All right, let's get some aqua green and some DuPont to make this like
Alright, let's let that dry. And now we're going to do this top part. It's a little bit too green to be an ocean, but I do really like it. I forget how much I love doing minis. I haven't done them in a while, and it's been months since I've done this many in one go. I think I need to get back to doing them. Direct 13. Room and small. What are we gonna do for a room and small? Actually, I know what I want. Oops. And 
and ultramarine blue. I think it's a light version that was in the set, actually. So let's see how it works. There's only three colors. There's number 10. So let's close Wet them all. Alright, the circle is small enough to fit, and I have a pencil. There we go.
That one's a bit big. So now we're on to we're skipping blue. We're on to pair of blue. A hint of yellow. Now we're skipping Huh, I've screwed this up somewhere. Hmm. Where have I screwed this up? Okay, so yellow. This should have been red. Hmm. Am I gonna start this over? Yes, I am. All right. Actually, let's be the fun of it. We're already this far. That's... Make it a beach ball.
Alright, I've created a foolproof system this time. This was always working off of the first time. It is too complicated for this. Um, and so this is what we've got. Just marking out what the first sections are and then going from there. But I'm going to leave that one. It's going to be one of our threes. So now we're on number 12 out of 13. So we are making progress. Um, so I'm going to clean up my desk because at this point I need all the mixing space I can get. And we are going to attempt this again. Oh, I was looking at it going, this doesn't seem right, but I couldn't quite figure out what the mistake was. So, well, you learn things every time you do a project like this. I'm also realizing that I should pull up the calendar again and count and make sure that I've actually got my counts correct. Because knowing me, I would think I've got all of them filmed and done and I'm actually missing some number of days. So I am going to check once we're through all of the threes and just make sure my counts are correct. Lost all the inside lines because I went over. Let's try this again. Yep. Yellow and red make orange. Make a very pretty orange. This is a red section. This is uh, Aquarius Red. It's one of my favorite reds. It's what I think a cadmium red should look like. Like it's got the color sort of like a cadmium red, but without the weird pebbly granulation that you can get in a cadmium red. I think it's sort of between a cadmium red and an Amazonian crimson, but also a little bit lighter. Um, I didn't have it in my palette for a very long time, but Jackson's had the starter set on sale a couple months ago. I think for about $10 Canadian. So I picked one up 
I'm really happy I did. I really like the color. These colors were all part of that starter set. It came with five colors. And I didn't have four of them and I just gifted the pen I had to someone else. Yep, I've messed this up again. Cool, cool. Um, let's grab a clean Kleenex. Get some clean water. Alright. So, this. Here is a green. This is blue. Which makes this purple. We go. This is now dry, which means we get to go about modifying these colors. So I'm going to add a whole bunch more yellow to this orange here. And some water. It's very dry. going to now add a whole bunch of red. And I'm going to have to add more yellow because I added too much red. I'm going to add more red to this purple. Which basically gets me the color of the color we took left when we took off the purple and we put it in the wrong spot. I'm going to add blue. Yes. 
I think it's really cute. <laughs> I'm going to add blue to the screen. Should give me like a nice turquoisey. With a whack load of yellow. <laughs> Here we go. It's so cute. There we go. All dry. And I believe that's number 12, which means we only have one left. In this set. Generate. Number seven. Jeez. Oh, we finally have a cosmic. What am I gonna do? I have so, so many colors. Oh. Um. I want colors from here. Yeah. So I'm using Code Moss and Pickle, which are all green earths. They're all PG-23s. They all appeared in my PG-23 video. But I chose them all because they all look different. So I'm actually going to start activating them because they take a while. Green Earth always does, no matter the brand. It is the most... One of the most? No, the most. Um, Potter's Pink is another very temperamental pigment. Green Earth, though, definitely wins for most temperamental it takes the longest to activate but if you've watched the green earth video you'll know my opinion on synthetic green earths um i guess they're not synthetic just like the mixtures that brands create so that they don't have to actually use pg-23 i don't love them i don't hate them i've got a couple but they're not my favorite so you're not those activate. I guess I'm gonna count. Let's pull up the calendar again. So I need Sundays are monochromatic, and there are five Sundays. So I've done two, I need three more. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday are three colors. There are, there are five Mondays four Wednesdays and four Thursdays. So it's 13. Thursday, Tuesday, Friday are twos and that's eight. I've got my eight. And then Saturdays are anything. I need four, I have one. Great, my counts are correct. Great. The number of pieces of paper I have correct. I need one more there. 
I need three more. So I need one more Saturday, three more Sundays, because I've already got two Saturdays that have color set out for them because they came up in color selections. And I didn't have stuff, which leaves me with one. <laughs> so we're we're golden. I have one extra card. Fantastic. All right. Let's do this. I'm excited. I like... Well, I have so many PG-23s that if I didn't like PG-23, there'd be an issue. I really like PG-23. It's one of my top I guess top five pigments. I was going to say top two, but there are some historical pigments that I have in my palette that I really like. So conventionally available pigments, it's top two. The other favorite is Potter's Pink. But of pigments of all time that I've tested, it's in my top five. We're gone to play around with it's in my top five. All right, everything's gone to sit for about five minutes, and so I think we're as activated as we're going to get. Never mind, we're going to use a little round.
I really like this one. It sort of reminds me of like a quilt square. And I really like that it's all done in different greenhouse. Our last anything is 28, which is Artistic Isle. Yes! I get to do the palette I wanted to do. Oh, I'm so excited. I love this palette. Um, it's great. All right, we've got all of our anythings. We need three more monochromes, so 25 is core, um, no, let's pick something else, four, white knights for a monochrome. Sure, 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 sure. Hmm. Let's do All right, we're actually going to choose a paint from Rosa Galleries because I've just realized they're not in the list. And I think we're going to go with Cobalt Gray, mostly because I really like it. I also can't. These all go in the palette, but they all go in different spots. And I can't remember where these cosmic creations want to go. So they're just going to have to wait a little bit until I'm ready to figure out where they go, where their home is. That's our last three. That's one of our monochromes, which means we have two more monochromes left. Generate seven cosmic. Oh, I get to do a monochrome cosmic. Oh, I want to use one of the really granulating new colors. I want to use, do I want to use pebble or a little bad? Let's look at a swatch. Pebble, a little bad. Let's use pebble. Pebbles. Always a favorite. Let me down a little bit first. There's Pebble. We have one more left to pick. 28. It's another artistic aisle. Can't remember how many I've done in her colors. Um, Somebody we haven't done yet. Nope. Somebody we've done a bunch of. 31. Nope, that's Addison and Zedwig. <laughs> uh, 10. Uh, 33. Uh, Lucas paints. 
which means I am doing a piece in sap green. That's done. Let's find Rufus sap green. Is it all green? Did I go? It is all green. Cool. All right. Let's start with our core anything, which is another double.
There. There. All right, let's tape them. Um, It's also time for new tape. This is getting a bit ragged. We have five left. And <laughs> then we've done 31 pieces in two days. And even though they're minis, it's still a lot. Um, even though they're minis with the time on it, it's still a lot. So, let's put this away. Let's grab our Dale and Roundies. Let's put the cores away. At this point, I'm not putting paints away on the palette. They're just living on the desk beside me. And I'll put things away later. These are probably two of my least used paints. They were bought during my I want nothing to do with cadmiums phase. I now don't care. And I use cadmiums in my pieces. My issue with these is that I poured them in 2020 and they are still sticky. I can't travel with them. If I touch the pans, I get paint on my hands. And so they're just too difficult for me to use conveniently. I keep meaning to post my tubes for sale. At some point I will because I just never plan to pour paint from them again. Like I can't even pour half pans to sell or trade with other people because the half pans never dry. I have tried everything, including using a dehydrator and nope they're just living their best lives staying moist so i also haven't bought any more daylight around paints because these two never dried <sighs> what do i want to paint with them mm -hmm. Let's do tiny florals like I did with the original one. Do a third, avoiding the green. And we mix the red and the orange.
tiny roses. We have four left. I'm so excited. We have four left. <laughs> Oh, it's been such a long project. I often jump into these things thinking they're going to be short, and they never are. Never. Ever, ever, ever. All right. We get to use the palette that I am so excited about. I was hoping that I'd get artistic aisle at some point with a spot I could use this palette. It's my favorite tiny palette. I don't think she's ever made these version of them again. She's done lots of different bottle caps and I have lots of her bottle cap palettes. I probably have about 10 of her bottle cap palettes. This one is my absolute favorite. It's got just the right like color selection. They're all mattes. I could travel with this palette and be totally happy and have done that. And I wish she would do more of them like this. Like I've got a whole selection of them where it's like mattes and metallics mixed together, but I keep my brushes separate. So I find them difficult to use. Um, this one though is perfect. It is all mattes. It's got a, it's crimson, teal, lemon yellow, and it's lemon and yellow ochre. And it's brilliant. It is such a fun palette. I hope that she'll end up doing more like this where it's just like a single mini matte palette because I find them super usable. Um, they're really only usable if you use a tiny brush, but I have no issues with using a tiny brush. And I think it's so much fun to be able to create a composition with this really tiny, like, tropical palette thing. I think that's what I actually ended up calling it for my swatch book so that my swatches were labeled. I did end up calling it tropical because I had to figure out names for all my bottle caps. So this one's called tropical. One of my other ones is called tomato because the colors reminded me of tomato. I think one of them is called sunset. Tropical though is my absolute favorite. So I'm going to go in with a tiny bit of crimson.
Now we're gonna let that dry. It's all dry. Now we're going to background do you think? All right. Thank <laughs> you. 
Alright. Three left. Three monochromes left. Two of which are different grades. Hmm. I think I'm gonna start with the green and then I'm gonna do the grays. Mostly just because that's what I feel like. And I'm not quite sure what I'm doing for the green one. So let's tuck that away. Let's bring the olive green. Let's also clean up my desk. I know what I'm doing. Made a decision. I bought the Lucas paint in a Facebook group that I absolutely love where you can buy, sell, and trade watercolor supplies that you're not using. And you can also do other art supplies, but it's mostly watercolor. Because so I wanted to try the brand. I didn't like it very much though, so I haven't actually purchased any more of them. But it was nice to be able to try them. Alright, we are going to do single dip. Two left. We're almost done. Oh my god. I was editing. We're almost done this part. Thank you. 
Pebble is the color that I used for the monochrome paint your style, the first one, where it was all one gray. It's so much fun. It's one of my favorite pieces I've ever done. So, we're going to do something cool and sort of similar to that, but tiny. Because these are all one and a quarter inches squared. Touch the tape. So, because of that pink line, the top is actually going to become bottom in hopes that as the layers build up, it gets covered up. There we go. Tiny tone on tone mountains. I should have probably gone lighter with the third layer. You sort of lose the fourth into the third. But I still think it looks pretty cool. As pieces go. We have one left and we don't even need tape for it. I'm so excited. Um, I can't believe we are at number 31.
but we are. So let's wet cobalt gray. So let's get into this. I don't know what I like best. We have one card left. All right, we're using our last card and I am changing the idea. go a little ghost and we're done i love the look of the cobalt gray it's got so many different colors in it but they're a lot lighter than most of the colors you find in those granulating mixes and so it's a lot of fun to work with there's more like light pink to it um i don't think i've included it in a mixing grades video yet though so maybe that'll happen soon. But for now, let's look at all of them together. There are a couple that I'm not sold on. Um, so all the monochromes. All right, I had to move you up a little bit. All the monochromes. And then we have all of the multi anything I felt like ones, which by the end became 
we're picking numbers that don't work for certain categories. They're going to become this category, which isn't what I think she meant, but was fun. Then we've got twos. I liked the twos. I did end up changing the orientation of one of them because once I pulled it off of the table and I flipped it around, I realized that it looked very seascapey. So when I painted it, I painted it like this, but when you turn it like this, it looks like water and sky. Shift these in just a little bit more. And so that's how I'm going to orient it. And then we have all of the threes. Yeah. Put the two seascapes beside each other. Pumpkin. There's a gourd. There's another set of trees. This is the one that I'm not sold on. Um, I wasn't sold on it yesterday either. I liked it in theory. This bottom dot is just slightly out of the others and I don't love it. So we'll see. I might end up redoing it um, and see if I can get that bottom dot just more in line. But overall, I'm quite happy with them. I like, I really like this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and this one. I'm really happy with them. Um, and I love doing minis. Minis are probably one of my favorite things to create pieces wise because they are so much fun and these really aren't big at all. Here's a legion pad in comparison to the minis. This is one of the mini legion pads as well. So they're really not really not big but they were a whole lot of fun to do and they're gonna be all of my October posts or daily posts in October there's gonna be other posts as well but daily content wise this is my daily content and I'm quite excited about it so I hope you enjoyed watching um it was definitely a fun project to do I really enjoyed it I My eye keeps coming back to this one. Complexity-wise, complexity it was not complicated to do. I love how white the white sections are from the gouache. It's interesting to see what sort of my eyes keep coming back to as I sit here and look at them all together. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching.